Hey everyone, Delve here. You can check out my channels here. Today I'm going over another offensive stat in Dark Souls, and this time it's Dexterity. On the main, I don't think that Dexterity is quite as strong as Strength, but it has some relatively unique upsides. So we'll start with the upsides. Similar to Strength, many weapons have a Dexterity requirement. And unlike Strength, the Dexterity requirement of most weapons doesn't end up exceeding about 25. This doesn't matter if you're planning to get dexterity to 40, but it also means that no dex requirements are over 40, which is a nice bonus. The biggest advantage to dexterity, in my opinion, is good damage from bows and arrows. While it's not difficult to meet the 16 dexterity requirement for a longbow, getting better damage out of it is an underrated perk. And of course, there are other ways of dealing range damage, such as crossbows and spells, but the ability to manually aim the bow puts bows in a unique position that can often make them much more useful than any other form of ranged damage. There are many enemies that can be cheesed with bows and arrows, but bows and arrows can also be useful against lots of random enemies as well. Bows are sort of like the great shields of dexterity. If you aren't using them, you aren't really using dexterity to its maximum effectiveness. I cannot understate bows as being the main bonus of dexterity as a stat. You might be concerned about the cost of arrows, but you'd be amazed at how much value you can get out of even the weakest arrows. Even the best physical arrows, which you should be using, only cost about 50 souls apiece, which is very affordable towards the end of the game. Another advantage to dexterity is that it specializes in smaller, lighter weaponry than strength. On the main, I think that these are really only efficient if you are buffing them with resins or spells, but some of them are pretty good even if you aren't, and if you are buffing them, you have lots of good options. So this is dexterity is basically the main new game plus kind of option. But obviously dexterity has some downsides too. For starters, most dex weapons have a strength requirement as well. Uh, this is usually more annoying than anything else, but in some scenarios the strength requirements can actually be quite high, somewhere in the 25 range. Overall, a dexterity character will have to waste at least a few points on strength. This is a downside just on principle, but there is a good shield that is worth investing 16 strength into, so it's not as wasted as you might think, but it is a few wasted points here and there maybe. Another downside of dexterity is the damage types you have access to. While slash and pierce damage are fine in most scenarios, as far as I can tell they simply aren't as useful in all scenarios as the strike damage type that strength weapons have access to. Another major downside is bleed damage, which is dubiously useful. Now you might think that bleed damage is useful, um, but how bleed works is that after enough consecutive strikes, you deal a chunk of damage to the enemy's HP. So that sounds really great, right? And uh, while this does work on some bosses, it's never any of the bosses that you'd want it to work on. So this works on bosses like Iron Golem, not on bosses like Manus and Calamy, which are the bosses you'd want it to work on, right? So it ends up being very disappointing, and it's kind of the selling point of a lot of dexterity weapons. So some of, so they're kind of balanced around bleed, and then it doesn't even work on bosses. So it's actually a really terrible mechanic, and it's arguably the biggest downside to dexterity weapons is that they trick you into believing that bleed is something that actually works when it really doesn't. Now, one thing I'm not certain of is whether or not these bosses are literally just immune to bleed, or whether or not it's just prohibitively difficult to bleed them. But, I don't know. It, you just can't bleed some of these endgame bosses, and all for all practical intents and purposes. So, um, I do think the dexterity weapons are fine on the main, but they are less good than strength weapons, in my opinion. At least if you're talking about a new game. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about the best dexterity weapons and where to get them. The Wanderer starter class starts with the Scimitar, which is a solid dex weapon, and the Hunter class also starts with the Shortbow, which is another fine option. There's some okay starting options in and around Firelink Shrine, including the Wing Spear in the Skeleton Graveyard, and the S-Dock down in the New Londo Ruins, but the story really starts at the Undead Merchant in the Undead Burg. He sells the Rapier, which is another fine starting weapon, um, but he also sells the Shortbow, which is really cool, and killing him will grant you the Uchigatana. This is a decent weapon. It does have a suite of advantages, including a good range, a fairly fast swing speed, and bleed damage. It also has a strength requirement of 14. The next weapon we're talking about is the Longbow. This can be easily found on the path from Darkroot Garden to Darkroot Basin. This is an unmistakably solid weapon, useful as soon as you can obtain it, the nearby Stone Guardians and Moonlight Butterfly being great examples. This is easily one of the strongest dexterity weapons. The next weapon is the Falchion. This can be found near the base of Blight Town if you follow the main entrance. This weapon is very similar to the Scimitar but does more poise damage and weighs a little more. 
Uh, this is one of the strongest dexterity weapons in the game, especially when buffed with resins or spells. If you want to make use of a small fast weapon, this is a really great option. You will not be disappointed except against some of the end game bosses. Okay, the next weapon I'll talk about is the Great Scythe. This can be obtained in the catacombs and can be obtained at the very start of the game if you wish. Just like the Uchi Katana, it has a strength requirement of 14, but its high base damage and ridiculous range and moveset make it probably the strongest dexterity weapon in the game. It also has bleed damage as well, and it only has a weight of 5, which is absolutely ridiculous for how good a weapon it is. The main downside with it is, is that it doesn't deal that much poise damage, so you're not going to stagger enemies with it. And uh, personally, I don't like this weapon, and the reason why is because I think it sort of feels exactly like a strength weapon. It's not really different from a strength weapon, um, but it is almost certainly the best melee dexterity weapon, assuming no magic-related buffs. Next, we have the Black Bow of Ferris. This can be found in the Darkroot Garden, carried by one of the enemies blocking the way to Sif. This weapon is very similar to the Longbow, but just a little bit stronger. This is a very strong dexterity weapon. I highly recommend it. And last is the Quelag's Fury Sword. This can be obtained by training Quelag's Soul in a plus 10 cursed sword with the giant blacksmith. This is a decent weapon, although it's going to have a slight damage problems against bosses at the end of the game. Uh, the main upside is that the fact that it does mostly fire damage, and that it scales with humanity. It's a perfectly viable option. Okay, so now I'll talk about rings. Most of the best rings are still good here, but there are some extra options here and there. For starters, the Dark Woodgrain Ring, which can be obtained by killing Shiva the East after joining the Forest Hunter's Covenant. This ring can be good on lots of builds, but since dexterity weapons tend to weigh less, you're more likely to get use out of it. There's also two rings which enhance bows and arrows. The first is the Hawk Ring, which can be found behind the Giant Blacksmith and Anne Rolando. And the second is the Leo Ring. This sometimes increases the damage of arrows or other thrust attacks, and it can be obtained by killing Ornstein after Smo. But of course, as usual, Ring of Favor and Protection and Havel's Ring are also just solid options as well. As for the game progression, it's relatively similar to a strength character. The two main items you'll want are the Large Ember in the Depths and the Very Large Ember in the New Londo Ruins. You can of course skip bosses to go obtaining these, uh, but other than that, the main sequence break would be to go to the catacombs early to obtain the Great Scythe, which you can do right at the start if you want. You can go, you can hit Firelink Shrine and then immediately go grab the Great Scythe, which is not a bad option. That distribution is similar to Strength, except you'll probably want some Strength investment. 14 gets you access to the Great Scythe, but I personally recommend 16 Strength so I can make use of the Eagle Shield, which can be quite helpful. It's a, it's just a great shield that any, basically any character can wield. Once you reach 40 dexterity, you are free to increase vitality and endurance as you like. Okay, so there's the dexterity guide. Overall, I think dexterity is weaker than strength, but it's still a solid stat with plenty of good options, especially with the flexibility that bows provide. Thanks for watching.